Howdy, everyone. Alrighty, so I am continuing on with the work involved with the holes and nut plates for the wing fairings. So this is the bottom of the wing here, and this is what I've done. So like I talked about, these holes I had already dimpled when I had done the wing skins, which was incorrect. These, sh these holes should not have been touched, but I did dimple them. So the first thing that I did using my squeezer, I came back and I un basically undimpled all of these hole locations on the entire wing on the entire bottom edge and the entire top edge on both wings. Once I had those holes flat, I came back with the uh, number 30 drill bit and drilled through them again. They have to be enlarged to a number 19 drill bit for the number eight screw. Now what I like to do, I have a nice drill index and I basically just pick out a drill be between the 30 that I've already drilled and the 19 that it needs to be drilled to. Between those two drills, I'll just pick something in the middle. And I'll use that drill bit to enlarge each of these holes and then I'll come back with the number 19 and final drill each of these holes. So I did that again on both the top and bottom on both wings. At that point, I came back and made sure that there weren't any chips left in between the skin and the rib. In between, you don't want any chips in between your stack, if you will. Same thing on the top of the wing, where you have the extra piece of aluminum that's in here that makes up the wing walk doubler. So you've got three layers of material on the top side of the wing. And again, you want to make sure you don't have any chips in between the layers. Once I had that done, I went ahead and on the bottom side where you only have the skin and the rib, I dimpled and I talked about this already. So the bottom number eight screw holes have been dimpled. On the top side, where you have three layers of material, I machine countersunk. And of course, you can't see that because I've got these covered up at the moment. But these are all machine countersunk. After I had that done, it was time to drill for the nut plate rivets. So like I have done in the past, I use the existing rivets as a guide. These rivets that are already in place have the little divots in the center of them. I lay a straight edge across those those dim, those uh, little divots on the rivets. I lay my straight edge across those and then I'll mark a straight line across the number eight hole. And that is where I center my holes for the uh, nut plate rivets. So you can see not all of them have wiped off yet. Here is, I've just used the existing skin rivets and mark a line for each number eight hole location. After that's done, like I've done in the past, I'll take a nut plate I'll use this as an example. So I'll take a nut plate, I'll put it on top of the skin like you see here. I'll run a countersunk screw from the back side. And again, I like using a countersunk screw because it, it self aligns itself in the hole. And then I'll tighten it and make sure that the holes in the nut plate line up with my reference line as you see here. Now it's not critical that the, that the line ends up centered on each hole. What's important is that if it's, off, if it's off on this bottom hole, for instance, if the line is to the right, you want the line on top also to the right. You just don't want it, you don't want the nut plate twisted. It's okay if it's off this way or this way, you just don't want it twisted. 
Once you have it lined up correctly, you tighten down your screw. And like I said, if you use a countersunk head screw, it self-aligns itself in the hole. Then you can come, come in with your drill bit and drill through, put in a Clico, drill through, and then move on. So that's what I had done. Once I had all of the holes drilled, this is kind of a work in progress. I just drilled these, but I haven't done anything else to them. So now that these have been drilled, I'll take each of these off. And I'll, again, I'll come back and make sure there are no chips in between the, the layers of material. I will deburr the holes on both sides and then it's just normal procedure after that. You come in, you Clico one side. I like to run a screw through. I put a screw in, again, it self-aligns in the countersink or it will self-align in the machine countersink. I'm sorry, it will self-align in the dimple or it will self-align in the machine countersink. Run a screw in. Put in a Clico, rivet the other side. Once that side is riveted, obviously remove the Clico, rivet the other side. So these are finished. These holes here are done. This is the bottom of the wing. These are dimpled. And I'm currently working on the bottom, or I'm sorry, the top of the wing, which is what you see here in progress. So like I said, at this point, I'll remove each of these. I'll make sure the, the, there are no chips in between the layers. Once those are, once I'm happy with that, I'll deburr, of course, on each side. Put the nut plate on the correct side of the rib. Run a screw through to help center it. And then rivet the nut plate. After I get that done, then I have to do the same process, but on the leading edge. Actually, this would be the fuel tank. So these are the holes here. And this will get the exact same procedure. I'll uh, bring these up to full size, which is a number 18 drill bit. And then I will dimple to, with a number 8 dimple die. Then I'll put the nut plate, or I'm, I'm sorry, I'll mark my straight line. Since these holes are nice and small, maybe I'll go ahead and mark my straight line now. Just through, just eyeball it through the center of each of these holes. I'll do that now while the hole is nice and small. I can get a more precise straight line. So I'll draw my straight lines across these holes. Then I'll enlarge them to the appropriate number 19 size drill bit probably in multiple steps. Then I will deburr, then I'll dimple with a number eight die. I'll put my nut plate on top, run the screw from the back side to hold the nut plate and to center it on the hole. Align the ears, align the ears of the nut plate on those lines. Drill through, Clico, drill through. There's no stack up here. This is just a piece of skin. So then deburr everything, put the nut plate back on the appropriate side. Again, run the screw in to hold it and to center it. Clico, rivet, remove Clico, rivet. And I'll have to do that on the top and bottom of each fuel tank. At that point, the wing fairing nut plates will be finished. So. Still have some work to do. There's a butt ton load of holes to drill. It's a lot of work. It's not horrible once you get a procedure and kind of get a routine. I've got a table nearby with my different uh, tools on it. I use uh, this angled pair of needle nose pliers. I put some tape on it to protect the skin and I'll use that to hold the nut plate from spinning as I tighten it. As I tighten the screw and then it's also nice because you can kind of use that to, to get your alignment. I also use a 90 degree drill 
So this is a nice 90 degree drill so I can get in here between the wings. I've got a wing here and a wing here on my cradle with the 90 degree drill bit. I can get in here to do my drilling without taking the wings out. But like I said, once you have a procedure in place and you have your tools figured out, it goes pretty quick. It's not the end of the world. So, like I said, I'm going to put the finishing touches on this. And then in order to do the wing tip or the, uh, the wing tank riveting and hole prep, I'm actually going to take the wings off of the cradle and put them on my workbench. I just, I just don't have room to work in here, especially on the back side. So the wings will be one at a time, will come off. I'll lay them over on the workbench. I'll finish the, uh, the wing fairing work on those. And I'm also, while they're up there on the workbench, I'm also going to go ahead and drill and nut plate the wing attach here. And I'll cover that when I get to it. But since they're out of the cradle up on the workbench, I'm going to go ahead and knock that loose end out as well. All right, so that's my deal. Let me get some more of this done, and I'll come back and show you the finished product. Talk to you later.